Welcome back. As we earlier said, we're going to talk about the escalating situation inside the Palestinian territory and uh, the genocidal crimes committed against humanity by the Israeli occupation forces and the efforts exerted by Egypt in every way to reach a ceasefire. And as we all know that the UN Security Council have passed a resolution uh, to call for an immediate uh, ceasefire in Gaza uh, for a month, uh, during the month of Ramadan. 14 members voted uh, in favor, and as usual, the United States abstained. Uh, with us over the phone is Excellency Ambassador Hussein Haridi, uh, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Uh, good morning, Ambassador Haridi. Good morning, Madam. How are you doing, sir? Uh, so, uh, w how do you assess the usual, I mean, the ongoing efforts by uh, the United Nations Security Council to uh, 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 declare or pass a resolution uh, to uh, uh, call for a, for ceasefire? But it's not, I mean, it's not binding uh, because uh, as long as the, uh, the United States is abstaining, it has nothing... Um, it has no, I mean, any effect in any way uh, to be able to enforce anyone to respect it. No, I, I understand that the Security Council resolution that was adopted last Monday calling for a Ramadan ceasefire in, the, right. in Gaza uh, with the release of the hostages, that resolution was passed, uh, wasn't passed in the context of Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter. So this resolution is not binding. And, uh, but uh, I guess it's, uh, it reflects the international consensus that the war in Gaza must come to an end as, as soon as possible. Mm. Uh, so uh, the resolution has a political and symbolic value. And as you said, it is not a binding uh, resolution uh, on the Israelis. Uh, anyhow, uh, historically, Israel uh, didn't uh, respect uh, most of the resolutions passed by the United Nations concerning the uh, Arab-Israeli conflict and particularly Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Palestinian uh, question. So the Israeli reaction to the resolution uh, should not be a surprise. Mm. In spite of all the uh, calls worldwide and uh, the efforts exerted by, of course, on top of all those countries is Egypt, efforts exerted by the United Nations to be able, the Security Council, to effect any type of a ceasefire or any type of effort to be able to enforce uh, Israel to open the borders, to allow the humanitarian aid, uh, to stop the genocidal crimes, do not cross the uh, red line, um, um, I mean, um, processing, I mean, the process of war, to uh, abide by the ethics and the international law which is not respected at all by Israel and protected by the, uh, the United States. However, we keep hearing, we, I mean, uh, 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 the United States is uh, recently again providing Israel with uh, billions of dollars of weapons and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, complete support for uh, another wave of bombardment over Gaza. Yeah, I understand that, Madam. But this is, of course, the contradictions in the position of the United States concerning uh, what's going on in, in Gaza. On the one hand, they, they, they abstain uh, at the Security Council resolution, at the, at the Security Council, so the resolution passed. But in the meantime, they were negotiating, they were negotiating with the Israeli Defense Minister on uh, uh, providing Israel with ammunition and, and the planes and fighter planes. So this is, of course, the American position is really contra highly contradictory, highly ambiguous. But having said that, uh, agreeing to uh, provide Israel with uh, ammunition and uh, 
fighter planes means one thing that the, the United States still, still supports the Israeli war against the uh, innocent Palestinians in Gaza. In other words, from what, what we could understand from uh, Your Excellency, uh, that um, in that sense, all the resolutions that could come out of the Security Council, all the efforts ex exerted by the international, other international community bodies, uh, the uh, I mean, uh, communities worldwide, the interna International Court of Justice also and it's, uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, court statements uh, that came, everything could, could not be binding because it's, yes. backed, it's backed by uh, the United States. It's controlled by the United States. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that I can, I, can, I can agree to the word controlled by the United States, but of course, but of course uh, the, uh, as I said, from a historical point of view, uh, Israel, uh, hasn't uh, respected uh, or hasn't implemented many resolutions uh, passed by uh, the United Nations uh, agencies and uh, United Nations bodies like the General Assembly or the Security Council. As far as the International Court of Justice is concerned, Mm. Even even the ruling back in 2004 on the wall of separ separation that Israel erected in some parts of the West, occupied Western Bank was not respected by the Israelis. So this is not something new. Uh, but let's hope that this war in Gaza would really uh, come to an end uh, as soon as possible. Right. As we are speaking, another warning sign uh, a dangerous one uh, is, um, I mean, uh, uh, glooming over Gaza, which is famine, of course. So uh, not only it's not a warning sign anymore, already they are uh, suffering from, uh, uh, I mean, extreme famine, uh, hunger. They are deprived of even the least humanitarian aid that could enter uh, to the Strip, also by Israel. They are besieged, uh, they are, uh, 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 I mean, in inside the prison and they are also hungry and they are being bombarded every day so uh, egypt is in that domain is exerting trying in every way to be able to pass any type of humanitarian aid uh, and uh, recently we have succeeded with other countries to do so talk to us about that process and the efforts exerted by egypt and how far have egypt succeeded with other countries to drop uh, the humanitarian aid, is it really successful? I mean, in what, uh, if you could rate it in percentage, uh, could you assess it uh, that it could continue to help the, the Palestinians uh, besieged inside the Strip? Well, uh, well, to put uh, an optimistic twist on it, it's better than nothing. But as far as percentage is concerned, according to the United Nations agencies, that do uh, work uh, on, on, on these uh, affairs, on these questions in Gaza. They believe it does not need the, the, all, these, all the assistance that have entered Gaza, uh, not, need, not meet the needs of the uh, people in, in, in Gaza. And they, uh, they, they believe that the only way to provide the Palestinians in Gaza with what or their needs is to open all the land crossings with us. And, as far, uh, and, and so far, the land crossings, most land crossings are closed by the Israelis. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, uh, Israel, until, until, until now, has impeded the uh, flow of assistance into Gaza, of course, uh, due to bureaucratic uh, bureaucratic uh, measures. So uh, the only thing is that uh, I, I don't think that we, well, what we need to do now is to stop this war. Uh, and, and speaking about assistance while this war goes on, well, for me, it's, it means nothing, really. Uh, this, this, this war must come to an end, Mara. 
Right. Last week, uh, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres made a visit to the region. Uh, what was the significance of that visit and how do you assess uh, the reaction, uh, global reaction to that visit? Was it helpful? Do you think it's going to carry some effect in the coming weeks? Well, as, as, as the Secretary General of the United Nations, I guess Mr. Guterres, this, this was his responsibility, his duty to come to the Rafah crossing and inspect the uh, humanitarian aid uh, and how it's being processed. And of course, during his visit to the Rafah crossing, he made some statements. And he, he said that the, the world uh, has, heard, has heard enough, the world has seen enough, and it's uh, in the absence in the absence of the, ceasefire, of the ceasefire, this is a moral outrage. I'm not quoting him. So uh, he, he, he was carrying out his responsibilities. But in, in the meantime, I, I, I don't think that the United Nations, under the present circumstances, can do uh, much more. Right. Uh, how do you think that visit, uh, do you think it's going to uh, help explain uh, more uh, or uh, uh, try to better explain the situation at Rafah because there were uh, Israeli allegations and uh, U.S. allegations that uh, the Rafah border is closed in the face of any humanitarian aid and it's Egypt's responsibility and all those claims. Uh, do you think uh, visits like that would be able to uh, correct the image? Mm, I don't think so, Madam, because... Uh, the visit was a, a symbolic visit by the United Nations Secretary General, mm. and, and nothing more than that. Uh, as I said, he was carrying out his duties as the Secretary General of the United Nations. But, uh, uh, however, the situation on the ground has remained the same. On the contrary, on the contrary, uh, the international many countries have warned of an impending Israeli incursion into the Rafah uh, area. And uh, despite the warnings from these countries, it's seen that the Israelis are bent on doing that. So I, I doubt very much if the visit of Mr. Guterres has really made a difference. Right. Uh, concerning the bombardment that have crossed the lines, I mean, um, uh, violated international uh, uh, human rights and violated even the war uh, ethics uh, by, by bombarding uh, schools, by bombarding uh, the mosques, by bombarding uh, hospitals where the innocent and unarmed civilians are taking shelter there. And killing, uh, the killings are mostly children and women and elderly. Uh, so uh, no, uh, no international pressure no international community uh, statements or resolutions have succeeded until the moment we're talking now to be able to uh, stop uh, this type of uh, bombarding and genocidal crimes inside the, the Strip. In your own assessment, are there any other laws that could enforce uh, the Israeli uh, occupation to stop this behavior? Uh, well, what Israel has been doing in Gaza in the last five months is not a surprise. Mm. Should not be a surprise. This is the true face of Israel. Israel has been imposed on the Arabs and the Palestinians by force, mm. and it has always existed up to now by force. Mm. So what the Israelis have been knowing in Gaza should not come as a surprise. Should not come as so, a surprise. Uh, yes, yes. Madam. yes, on that note, uh, of course. Thank uh, you very much, Madam. Uh, Ambassador Hussein Haridi, uh, Your Excellency, uh, former Assistant Foreign Minister, would like to thank you, sir, uh, talking to the Breakfast Show. And by this, we come to the end of this edition of the Breakfast Show. Many thanks to all of you. Until we see you again tomorrow morning, that's a goodbye.